This nation did have a new birth of freedom. And as our frontiers pushed west, we looked for new leaders that embodied our bold and new spirit. Leaders like Theodore Roosevelt, born to wealth and privilege, but imbued with the spirit of the American frontier. He rode with cowboys and led his rough riders up San Juan Hill during the Spanish-American War. This kind-hearted, tough guy fought against monopolies and for the working class. We called him Teddy. Anything else would have been far too formal. He even refused to call his official residence the executive mansion. To him, it was just a house. It was just a white house. And so, it would always be called. Three decades later, his distant cousin Franklin Delano Roosevelt would occupy that same White House and lead the country through its hardest trials since the Civil War. A world war was looming, and the Great Depression had paralyzed a great nation. The president we called upon to lead us through those hard times was himself paralyzed by polio. But with determined optimism, he had triumphed. And now he was ready to share his cheerful strength with a badly frightened people. During FDR's fireside chats on the radio, entire cities came to a standstill and listened. The people themselves, let us unite in banishing fear. Together, we cannot fail. In a calm and reassuring voice, he called out to America, and America answered back. We're just modest, middle-class people having Most lost the little we had. My savings are tied up in a closed bank. I believe that you will guide us through this time. Protect us from that conflict in Europe, dear president. Birthday, and I expect to be in service shortly. Now we know we are not fighting alone. I feel that at last we can hope. With that hope, we began to believe in the future again. FDR had reminded us of the power of the American dream. Sixteen years later, America's youngest elected president once again called upon the power of the people to change the world. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans John F. Kennedy's stirring words ushered in a historic decade of civic activism in which ordinary Americans struggled to right old wrongs and chart new frontiers of possibility. It has always been the role of presidents to remind us of our roots, to call us to the future. In their best moments, they speak words that are already there in our hearts, especially in times of tragedy. All I have, I would have given pleasure not to be standing here today. We mourn seven heroes. We mourn their loss as a nation together. You have lost too much, but you have certainly not lost America, for we will stand with you. George Washington, 
John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, William Henry Harrison, John Tyler, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James A. Garfield, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard M. Nixon, Gerald R. Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush. And now we come to the present, a present that is rooted in our past. For all of Liberty's leaders have one thing in common, one trust they all accepted. My fellow citizens, no event could have filled me with greater anxieties than that notification on the 14th day of April, 1789, that you had selected me to lead our nation. But it was with the confidence of my fellow citizens that I took an oath, 35 simple words that have been repeated by every American president throughout history. As long as that oath is taken and solemnly fulfilled, the American dream will endure. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States, so help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, President Barack Obama. The American dream is as old as our founding, but as timeless as our hopes. It is reborn every day in the heart of every child who wakes up in a land of limitless possibilities, in a country where we the people means all the people. We may come from different places and believe in different things, but what makes us American is a shared spirit, a spirit of courage and determination of kindness and generosity. It is a spirit grounded in the wisdom of the generations that have gone before us, but open to the unimagined discoveries and possibilities on the horizon that lies ahead. Let us enjoy it, cherish it, defend it, and pass it on to our children as the bright and beautiful blessing it is. 
this enduring American dream.